Welcome back to the channel. We have this interesting question that says that find all values of k that satisfies k squared minus k cubed equal to 12. Well, our first step will be for us to move all items on the left hand side to the right hand side. And when we do that, we're going to have an expression like this. When this crosses to the right, it becomes positive k cubed. When this crosses to the right, it becomes negative k squared. I've already got 12 on the right, so that will be plus 12 equal to 0. Now, we're going to be keeping this at the side. Let's focus on what we have here. Now, notice that from these first two terms, k squared is common. So, I can factor out k squared. Now, open brackets. So k squared divided by k squared, I have 1 minus k cubed divided by k squared, I have k. And this is equal to 12. Now simplifying further, we have k squared times 1 minus k is equal to... Now we're going to be splitting 12 into two factors. One of which is going to be a perfect squared. So that will be 4. So 4 times 3 gives 12. So simplifying further, we see that we'll pair these perfect squares together. So k squared is equal to this perfect square here, 4. And 1 minus k, let me remove the bracket, which is 1 minus k. This factor will be equal to 3. When I take the square root of both sides, I'm going to have k to be equal to plus or minus 2 from here. Why here? When I move k to the right hand side and move 3 to the left, I'm going to have k to be equal to negative 2 as a result. So what do we choose? Now if we look at the original expression, there is no doubt that k must be negative. So the real value of k that is negative is negative 2. So that means if k is equal to negative 2, that means k plus 2 is a factor of this polynomial. Now let's find the other factor. So the other factor is going to be a quadratic equation, which is k squared plus ak plus b close bracket equal to 0. So what is going to be our a and b? We can get the value of a and b by first expanding this expression. So let's expand k times k squared plus ak plus b and then plus 2 times k squared plus ak plus b. Now on expanding, we're going to have k times k squared is k cubed plus k times ak is ak squared plus k times b is kb plus 2 times k squared is 2k squared plus 2 times ak is 2ak plus 2 times b is 2b. Now I'm going to start with this k cube. So k cube plus, remember after cube we're going to have term with a squared plus we're going to have term with a k and then before having the constants. So what are the terms with k squared? I have a and I also have plus 2. So a plus 2 are the coefficients of k squared. Now what about the coefficient of k? We have b and we also have 2a. So this will be b plus 2a. Very good. So the constant term here is plus 2b. So plus 2b. Very good. Now, in order for us to get the values of a and b, we're going to compare this expression with the original expression. Now, taking the coefficient of k squared. The coefficient of k squared from here is a plus 2. This is equal to the coefficient of k squared from here is negative 1. So the value of a will be negative 1 
and as 2 crosses it becomes negative 2 so this will be negative 1 negative 2 is negative 3 and then to get a value of b i'm going to be comparing the constant term the constant term here is 2b this is equal to the constant term here is 12. when i divide both sides by 2 2 cancels out 2 so b will be equal to 12 divided by 2 is 6. so now let's replace a equal to negative 3 and b equal to 6 here so we've got a equal to negative 3 so i'm going to be removing this and i'll be putting negative 3 in place of a then i'll remove b and i'll be putting 6 in place of b that is it so we have this expression to solve so on the left hand side we have two cases this times this equal to zero so that means that it is either k plus 2 is equal to 0 or k squared minus 3k plus 6 is equal to 0. From this first case, it is easy to get a value of k by moving 2 to the right hand side to give negative 2. Why from this second case? We're going to be using the quadratic formula. Our a from here is 1, our b is negative 3. And our c is 6. So using the quadratic formula, we have the value of k. This is the first value, so this will be the second and third. So the value of k will be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now on substituting, the values of k here will be negative b b is negative 3 plus or minus the square root of b which is negative 3 squared minus 4 times a times c good all over 2 times a that will be 2 times 1 so this results to k equal to negative times negative is positive so i'm going to be having positive 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared is 9 minus 4 times 1 times 6 is 24. All over 2 times 1, that will be 2. So simplifying further, the value of k would then be 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 24 is negative 15. All over 2. Very good. Now we can simplify further by saying that k, which is the value of k, is equal to 3 plus or minus. Now this expression can be written as negative 15 is same as negative 1 times 15 all over 2. Now we can separate those terms inside this radical by saying that 3 plus or minus this expression now becomes the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 15 all over 2. And then finally, the values of k is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 is i, which is iota, times the square root of 15 all over 2. So there are two values of k from here. So in total, we have three values of k, of which one is the real solution, and the other two are complex solutions. Well, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.